going to go back to Christina Gonzalez. Uh, you know, we were showing uh, with Sky Fox earlier that that car that was being pursued. Um, we, we believe that there are looters that are inside that car. Um, and Christina, you, you the, that's on your screen right now that it stands out. Um, it's that very distinctive color going at 90 miles an hour on the freeway. Christina Gonzalez, uh, you, we believe you yes. may be with the people who were looted by the individuals yes. in that car? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. We were just, we've been following the officers as they have been following the cars that have separated. Now, I'm just up the street from the Big Five. That vehicle that was on the freeway was a vehicle part of the group, according to these people who hit the Big Five and came up over here. Wow. How many cars? I mean, tell me, explain to me what happened. It's about like 20, 30 cars, literally just all driving together. And like four all, in a car. literally four in a car. Pulling up to each shopping center, getting out, breaking the windows, looting, and then all getting back in and then running around to different stores and doing it all over. Now, were police anywhere nearby when this they was were, going? They were coming and going. Just, they're, all, they're in every direction. Coming and going in every direction. This is the man that has been here. Close. My, my daughter is 34 years Close. old. He was giving me diapers when I didn't have the money to buy my child diapers. We've been here for almost You're 35 years, almost 40 years now we've been here on this corner. So we've seen a lot. These are all the people that live around here, so they're all protecting the corner store basically right now. I mean, I'm looking at, you've, you've got some weaponry, you've got your vest on, and, and you've got her, her husband's over here. I mean, wow. What do you think about having it come to this when we've got so much police around us? That's just sad that they think this is the right way of doing it. It's like robbing mom and pop shops when really I understand they want to protest, but then go to the town halls, go to the police uh, police stations, don't destroy and loot. Like that, that doesn't solve anything. It doesn't anything. serve a purpose. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't serve a purpose. You know, as, as an African American woman, and you understand what they're protesting about, do you think these guys have anything to do with the protest? No. I don't think they have anything to do with the protest. I believe, I believe that what they're doing is trying to get what they can get because of the protest situation. So I have children, African American kids. He's not African American. His son's not African American. But you're not finna come to our city and tear our city up when this man has been here for over 30 plus years and I helped everybody out on this block. And you're gonna stand here tonight? Who? I'm gonna stand here tonight. My husband is here. My that's my brother-in-law right there. My twin sisters over there. They're not moving nothing over here. And then as long as we're around this neighborhood, you're not tearing nothing else up either. We, it's, 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 we everybody know each other. Why are you tearing stuff up? And at the end of the day, then you're gonna come and ask for help. We hungry. There's homeless people that's out here, and they want to be fed. This young man. Right we'll feed them. All these 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 residents, they feed them. Why would y'all want to tear up the city? And you know what I've noticed? They didn't come from here. They coming from South Central. That's where they coming from. Thanks. So what makes you think that? Because not, I have friends. I got a lot of friends out here. He knows a lot of people too. Nobody's coming to, to de destroy his store. These are people that we've never seen. You ain't tearing up nothing. Now, one of the things, let's look across the street because what is happening is people are just boarding up. That is the 98 cent discount store, and they're having to board up. They got hit. Uh, they, it's just. It, it's just so sad Christina, because it's literally uh, just Christ going up and down. Uh, yes. I, I have a question too. Uh, for, for the individuals sure. that are armed, did they interact with those looters and did the looters see their guns? Um, my anchor's asking is, did you have the guns out when the looters came by or did you bring them out? Did you interact with them? What, what, did they see your guns? They seen, they seen us. Once they seen us, they started running. They started, they were scared. Ah. Like right down, like these people. Christina, let, yeah. let's go yeah. back in time yes. for a minute to the 92 riots because you and I both saw scenes much like that where you had store owners with weapons just like that. It is a, a scary yep. scene. It's an eerie scene. Uh, what, what do you make of that? I make that people don't feel safe. We were in Koreatown yep. where the Korean, you know, people were on top of their businesses with weaponry. They're not the only ones with weapons up and down Van Nuys. I can tell you that. Uh, they're the ones that are talking to me about it. But we have seen quite a few stores 
feeling that they have to protect. And you heard the officers when we were talking to them back at the location where they took out the safe. They're doing what they can. They're doing what they can, but... At this point, this is really difficult. This is yeah. really, really difficult. We have been half the day. I mean, you hear the ambulances. We follow the helicopter. There were at least 20 vehicles. That is true. And then they separate. Yeah. And we'll follow one group. And, and as a matter of fact, we now have that video, I believe. If we can roll on the first video, because oh, wait, what's also bailed. happening. Christina, oh, wait. wait. Oh. Someone bailed from the pursuit. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We now have... Oh, well, that's let's take a look. look at all these cops that are coming. Yeah, well, Van Nuys is under siege at this point. That woman you interviewed, Christina, was one of the, the, the greatest characters we've met in this entire uh, few-day experience. She was really something else uh, to hear her story and about yeah. protecting her community. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, she was. I, and you can I, see they're, they're, they're beginning to board up. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I, I'm ahead, also please. fascinated in that moment that the, the, the stare down that these looters see those individuals holding the weapons and then all of a sudden they decide to run the other direction. Christina, we're going to get back to you in one, well, se in, in one second. We want to reset things as, as it's now 6.30 here on Fox 11. Uh, I'm Alex Michaels with Christine DeVos. We're going to get back to you. Christina De Gonzalez, some developments where you are in Van Nuys. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you what's going on. So the these guys in the vehicles, let's get a little bit closer. This vehicle and those guys over there got out of the other vehicle. There's a gold store, a uh, gold store in the parking lot, and they were heading to it. And these guys came out and they said, no, you're not. Wow. And he's with us. They're, they're having a standoff here. Oh, my God. Uh, arguing about why they're not being allowed to break into the place. So I'm going to kind of let you listen to this. So these are looters yes. squaring off with community members Maybe. holding weapons on the yes. street. Yes. And where are all those cops now, that we... just drove past you? Uh, there are three blocks down. Yeah. <laughs> This is really something here to see those store owners who want to protect their own business, yet they're by a business that is so vulnerable. Okay, so is that that's her family telling her to go back? Yeah. Christina, yes, go yes, ahead. yes. Telling her to because the two vehicles, there's actually three vehicles. And uh, what is happening is that, they, again, they parked in front of the, if you see the buy gold sign, there's a place for it inside the um, parking lot. And uh, they don't want them to go in there. They were heading that way. They did not get in, but they don't want to be told what to do. So it's a standoff. Now, the officers are, they went down the street past us, and you can see probably the lights about two blocks down. But uh, right now, they're just going to... Uh, Hold on. Let me let me put my microphone near. Let me talk to him. Of course, you've got to be careful about some language here. It's my family business. Stop. We're closed. We're closed. We're closed. We're closed. We're closed. We're closed. Were those guys going into the gold store? Huh? What? Those guys? What, what, what's going on? They were closed, bro. Okay, they're kind of busy, but that's what we saw. Gosh, Christina, it, it really just seems so so scary and so dangerous there. Please be safe. Uh, but, but I wonder oh, yeah, how Yeah, we're okay. Much... I think, okay, here come the cops. Here comes the cops. They're trying to flag them down. We're trying to flag down the cops. Oh. Hold on, let me flag them back here. They're driving past us. Oh. Stop. It just goes to show right, you perhaps well, how uh, overwhelmed the police department is right now. This is one of They the have gone up and down the street. Uh, at least, okay, they're turning around. There they come, there they come. I, they just saw me. In, in three days of surreal moments on TV, this is one of the most surreal moments we've seen. Uh, what is underway right. right now in Van Nuys. All right, so here come the police officers They're to help to stop these some community guys members. To loot. The guys on the <laughs> other side are in cars. All right, here they come. The guys here are trying to stop over there from looting in the cars. All right, now they're telling them. No, no, they're no, fine. They're good. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. no. Whoa. Oh, my God. Joe, Joe, to your right. 
Come on. He's with us. He is with me, Chris. Sir, they're, 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 okay, sir, sir. They're the store owners. They were protecting the looters, sir. Whoa. They're, they're protecting the stores. Or looters are over there. Stand down for a sec, please. Relax. You're losing your looters. We're they're taking that way. These are the people in the stores Which trying one? to stop. Point, point. All three of them. Okay. The, we're putting those in handcuffs right now. You do know no, they're no. not the looters. One person talk. Where's okay. the looter? Where's He's, the looter? Where's the looter? Where's they're the looter? They're protecting this building. Okay. Where'd the looter go? They were. Okay, description. Uh, Black, white, Asian. African Americans. Okay. They're in a gray vehicle. The other gray vehicle is parked in front of the Buy Gold store. A group of six of them. Six. We have video. Okay. African. Okay. You talk to me. Okay. Okay. They have Chris, nothing. Talk to, to my partner, please. They have nothing okay. to do. Okay. I need you to relax and tell me. Okay. These people now. were protecting okay. this store. I don't care about them. The looters that You're walked away. Them in looters that walked away. Which way did they go? Your officers are okay. following them. Okay. They went south. Okay. Car. What kind? Gray colored vehicle was okay. one of is them. Is it like that or is it like that? Like that kind of colored so like vehicle. That. Four door or two door? Uh, two door. Two door? How many people? Uh, between six and eight African Americans. Six and eight African Americans. Okay. That's okay. I'm trying. I know. And you're, live t- you're on live TV right I now. I know. I'm trying to find oh, wow. out. I'm asking you stuff. If you can't yeah. tell me who they are, I can't chase them. Okay. That's all. Your I'm officers are chasing them. Okay. That's one Good. of them. Okay. They're chasing them. Okay. Good. Okay. So what happened is. Okay. There we go. There we go. These Tell people me. are the people from the liquor store. Okay. They're protecting their business. Okay. Three That's vehicles. Fine. That's fine. And they, are, they live here now. Three vehicles drove up in front of the Buy Gold. Okay. And they told them, get away from that. And they started arguing okay. about it. Okay. And after they started arguing about it, that's okay. when we started flagging okay. you down. And that's when they ran. Okay. Some of your officers went that way. Okay. And that's what I was okay. trying to tell you. What I'm trying to say is because when these things happen, I know you want to say everything. And I, I appreciate that. But it's like, I need the brass tacks. Yes. How many? What? Between what six and eight. I know. Okay. And that's what I needed. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's why I was trying to get okay. upset. Okay. Because everybody's trying to help. I, I understand that. But how many? Where they went? What color? And what did they look like? I got that's it. All it. And was, you guys, okay? it's hard. No, no, I know. I understand. And it's okay. hard. You say. But these people have nothing to do with that. Okay. This is unreal. But anyway, they're, they're putting this lady in handcuffs. What? I've just told them. You see, and here is where. This is the, some of the systemic issues that maybe some of those protesters are upset about. Yeah. So, I mean, right? it's, it's kind of surprising. And granted, I am excited telling them the story, but at this point, they lose the looters. Okay, looks like they're, they're taking the, people, the handcuffs off. To. Christine, looks like they've taken the handcuffs off. Good. They've, they've gotten the picture okay. that these three were the good guys there here at the business. So that's been cleared up. It, can, it just goes to show you how easily and quickly things can go wrong or can be misinterpreted. Wow. Christina. This, this, yeah. is, this is one yep. of the wildest yes. things I've ever seen. Uh, and, and then to see oh, that... Oh, now they're that, taking the woman from the car. She's not involved. She just stopped to look. Okay. I think she is with these people. And she came over to get her mom because she saw it on TV. Mm. Well, th- I think that's what's going on. That shows you how, how, how quickly a situation can quickly. escalate. Yes. How, uh, how yes. So adrenaline can be a, a bad thing yes. in some of these situations. People immediately go from zero to ten. Um, and, and the challenges for a lot of people in these situations. Obviously, it's a high-pressure, intense situation for police as well. Um, but, but that Stay was so... Um, Stay it's Stay upsetting, Christine, us. to watch that woman that we all had just seen as sort of the hero of this situation be taken in handcuffs. Thankfully, no, no, she's, we're not, we're she's not. been released yes, and police are trying to figure just... this out. You make it harder on us. I'm, I'm the, the security, uh, our security guard, they're trying to, uh, because he doesn't have an ID. Um, I'm, I'm getting, uh, so you... we need to move back. Yes, we're going to move back. Can we get in our truck and move it back? A little further down. Uh, this is our truck. Down to just to the corner. Okay, just okay, sir. All right, so now they're moving us back. Well, Christina, you can imagine you know, as police arrive and they see their store owners with their guns and, and people outside yeah. the store, hard to dif- differentiate uh, who... I'm sorry? Go ahead, Christina. To them? I, I tried. <laughs> <There's>... <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, sir. Okay, so there, there is somebody there, here from the police department. That's Andy, who, that's who Andy Nyman, who, who we've known for you. That was Andy yeah. Nyman, right, Christina? Yeah. Yes, that is Andy. Andy just arrived, and he said, did you get to tell him what's going on? Yeah. Who is that? You can go ahead and explain. Yeah, he's the, he's, the, head of me, he's the head of media relations for the, for the LAPD. He's a familiar face that we've known for years, somebody yes. who would know and, yes. and trust Christina's word as compared to some of these officers who just rolled up in, onto the scene uh, in, in the, the heated moment that just happened. Yes. And I understand, look, I mean, this has been happening all day. Um, we have had a few encounters um, with law enforcement because they're trying to do their job. And uh, we understand that. Sir, I think you dropped something. All uh, right, you know, officer, there you go. You're stepping on it. That came from your pocket, sir. And um, I think they're, we're all trying to be as courteous as we can with one another um, and and people have different personalities including police officers and media i am very familiar with these guys and uh, they're from well, a lot of the old timers know me so we've been okay I, and i don't take it personally um but i just I, hope I, that we, they got we, we should know christina the old timers know you but you've been in management here at fox 11 and not on the streets for several years so uh, to some of the newer officers, you might not be necessarily as familiar as to those who would know you as yeah. a solid veteran journalist the, here at KTTV. The, 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 the thing that I think, I think some people will no, see, you. though, I, I, was that the... You know, what's going on and you do you know, the best you can. So. Since I, have you, I have you with me. I mean, you guys, this is overwhelming. It's been, we've been following them, and, and, and to their credit, they're trying to do what they're trying to do, and, and that's why I was just trying to explain to him. So, and I don't... He did his job. We're all doing our job now. What is going on? I mean, we've got mm. store owners with weaponry. We've got bands of different vehicles, and we got what is that a flashbang or flashbang, right? And I know they were following them over there. I mean, think what 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 can you tell us? Yeah, it's you know this is just basically you have individuals who are set on basically destruction and theft and just nothing but criminal activity and they're taking full advantage of the protests and the message that's trying to get out about the injustices you know that need to be addressed right? and we all agree with that yeah everybody in law enforcement agrees with that you know so in, in, the, in the scheme of having i mean we're going into our curfew and it's nightfall right and you guys are running up and down doing a great job. Are we planning on bringing in perhaps like some National Guard or something to help you guys out? Well, the National Guard, as you know, are already deployed. And uh, today we also heard the president make a declaration. Um, so we hope it doesn't get to that. We hope that the public will band together. They'll talk to their their relatives, their brothers or sisters who may be partaking in this illegal activity and just stop the chaos because it's not helping anybody. You know, it's just creating more chaos and more pain and suffering for everybody. So. And it's interesting because if we can go see over there, one of the things, and, and you and I were back here in 92 and, and we remember, but I never saw, whenever you see officers today, you see people gathering and confronting them, which I had not, usually people ran away from the line. Right. Now, wherever you guys are gathering, you actually have people coming up and yelling at them. Well, again, we have nothing but support for people that want to express their First Amendment. And a lot of it is angry First Amendment expression. So we understand that. When it becomes violent, when it becomes lawless, that we have no other choice but to take action and try to stop that because nobody wins. And the message gets lost in the violence and in the anger. Christina, Christina, I don't, I don't know if, uh, yes, if, yes. if, if Andy can answer this because he wasn't here when it happened, so it's unfair to put him on the, on the, on. But there are a lot of people that are watching that will have, would have just seen a, an African American woman who was a hero in her community, working to protect the community, who literally waved down the police for help, and then moments later she's taken into handcuffs. They assumed that she was a That's suspect. Bad. That is a very bad image for a lot of people who are literally in the process of protesting systemic racism within police departments. Can, can he talk about that or can anybody there talk about that? I, I'm going to ask him about it, but I do think that's the reason he rolled up. I think that's what he saw. And what, you know, our anchors are asking is, you see, we had been here for a while, and the African-American woman was talking about protecting this place when the officers rolled up, they right. put her in handcuffs, and that's an image that is a very difficult one to see. And, sure. and once we figured it out, I think, I don't know if you were here when that happened, but can you speak to that? Because that's sometimes what people see. 
So, so you were here, and I was watching your live broadcast, and that's why I came from my my station. Thank you. <laughs> because I saw the confusion. But that's what officers are faced with all the time. You know, they have citizens that are flagging them down, which is what was occurring here. You know, not knowing what's going on, and until they sort everything out, they don't know who they're dealing with. They don't know if they're good guys, bad guys, and so we have to we have to get it under control first, and then sort everything out. And one of the suggestions, perhaps, for our viewers and people, I think the guns. It's what is what actually set off the mindset. The guns that were legally owned by the liquor store owners, but still. Yeah, we, we really discourage, you know, citizens from arming themselves and protecting their properties with guns. I, I understand it, but it, you can see what happened here. This could have been very tragic where our officers are, are approaching. They see people who have shotguns and people who have been waving them down thinking that maybe there's a robbery here. Maybe somebody just got shot. And you got store owners who think they're doing the right thing and are entitled, but there's this is where great danger is. And, and, so, and, but that, and that's the problem because we're, we've talked to people who their places have been trashed today, right close to where we had a protest and a lot of officers, and they're, they're feeling like they have to arm themselves. I, 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 I understand, and, and I feel for them. And, and we have to really be cognizant of the fact that, you know, our officers are doing everything they can. And when they come upon a scene and people have guns or weapons, one individual had a knife, a very large knife in his waistband, we don't know what's going on. And so till, until we control it, and oftentimes that means pointing weapon, our weapons at them to get them to comply, disarming them, searching them, and then figuring out what's going on. I think, and hopefully that will be something that, because I know people are listening, and, and, and that's something important, because a lot of people are armed up and down the street. I've seen it, you know it, yeah. and I don't want to, I don't want somebody to get hurt, and I neither do you. Do you have any other questions but for the, yeah, the, but the, Andy the, the, before the, he runs the, off, because the, I know he... The first instinct, though, is to is to handcuff a woman? I mean, that that's where I think a lot of yes. people will be will be lost in this. I think the first instinct, they're asking if the first instinct is to handcuff a woman and people. So, so if we don't know what's going on in this lawlessness right now, right now we're under curfew. So technically everybody that is out here is subject to arrest, which means that we can lawfully detain you, which means we can handcuff you, search you, uh, particularly when there's weapons that are visible. So, so that is going to happen. What we would encourage everybody to do is to avoid that. But if the police do approach you and you've done nothing wrong, just cooperate. Don't explain until we get you controlled. Then we will ask you the questions and contain you and, and figure out what's going on. Does that, uh, can we let him go now? Yes, yeah. okay, thank, thank, please thank pass you on so our much. thanks and regards to Andy, thank who we both so like I know you have to run. appreciate thank you so very much. much uh, Be safe. For, and our friend over the if years. Only, my apologies. If, if I should only, have my mask on and, and right. when talking to him. That was one of If, if, if only we could have, you know, the LAPD higher ups watching every scene that plays out well, across the city and be able to intervene like that and, and, come, come and to, to have Christina literally with video evidence yeah. of what just happened. <laughs> Um, All right. That was that was I one of the. I kind of stop them. That was my, one of the wildest. In my loud, fast yeah. Cuban way. Yeah. Uh, right. God bless you, Christina. You. I didn't want them to. All right. Thank you. We're going to give you a moment to breathe after that wild experience. Now let's go to Christina Gonzalez, um, hopefully for some more information on on a scene that I think we're all still trying to process that happened within the last half hour. <laughs> Yes, we actually moved out the area where we were at, which we're going to show you in a second what happened. It's right behind those officers. They have created an area around the liquor store where we had stopped to talk to some of the owners who were armed and some of the residents in the area who were trying to protect it from looters. And then three vehicles of possible looters had stopped in front of the Buy Gold store and they tried to tell them to get out of them and it turned into a standoff. We flagged down some police and let's just show you what happened. Let me tell you, let me tell you what's going on. So these guys in the vehicles, let's get a little bit closer. This vehicle and those guys over there got out of the other vehicle. There's a gold store, a gold store in the parking lot, and they were heading to it. And these guys came out and they said, no, you're not. Wow. And he's with us. They're, they're having a standoff here. Oh, my God. Uh, arguing about why they're not being allowed to break into the place. So I'm going to kind of let you listen to this. So these are looters yes. squaring off with community members Maybe. holding weapons on the yes. street. Yes. And where are all those cops now that we... just drove past you? Uh, they're three blocks down. Yeah. <laughs>
This is really something here to see those store owners who want to protect their own business, yet they're by a business that is so vulnerable. Okay, so is that that's her family telling her to go back? Yeah, Christina. Yes. Go. She's my family business. Stop. Yeah, we're, we're closed. We're closed. We're closed. We're closed. We're closed. Were those guys going into the gold store? Huh? What? Those guys? What, what, what's going on? Dude, we're closed, bro. Okay, they're kind of busy, but that's what we saw. Here comes the cops. They're trying to flag them down. We're trying to flag down the cops. Oh. Hold on. Let me flag them back here. They're driving past us. Oh. Stop. Uh, at least, okay, they're turning around. There they come. There they come. I, they just saw me. In, in three days of surreal moments on TV, this is one of the most surreal moments we've seen. Uh, what is underway right. right now in Van Nuys. All right, so here come the police officers they're to help to these community members. The guys on the <laughs> other side are in cars. All right, here they come. The guys here are trying to stop over there from looting in the cars. All right, now they're telling them. No, no, they're no, fine. They're good. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. no. Whoa. Oh, my God. Joe, Joe, to your right. Come on. He's with us. He is with me. He's with us. Sir, they, they, they're... Okay, sir. Sir? They're the store owners. They were protecting the looters, sir. Whoa. They're, they're protecting the stores. The looters are over there. Stand down for a sec, please. Yeah, relax. You're losing your looters. We're they're taking going down that way. These are the people in the store Which trying one? to stop. Point, point. All three of them. Okay. The, we're putting those in handcuffs right now. Dude, no, 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 they're no. not the looters. Hey, one person talk. Where's, okay. the Where's the looter? Where's the looter? Where's the looter? Where's they're helps protecting this building. Hey, where'd the looter go? They were. Okay, description. Uh, Black, white, Asian. African Americans. Okay. They're in a gray vehicle. The other gray vehicle is parked in front of the Buy Gold store. A group of six of them. Six. Of, we have video. Okay. That's all. Your officers are chasing them. That's one of them. Okay. This is unreal. But anyway, they're, they're putting this lady in handcuffs. I've just told them. You see, and here is where. This is the, some of the systemic issues that maybe some of those protesters are upset about. And uh, we're back here live. They did eventually understand that the uh, lady in the blue was not a looter. They took off the handcuffs from her and the people at the store. Now, what's going on right now, and the reason they moved us is because they're trying to find some of those people. And actually, I didn't want them to see our faces, and they didn't want us in the middle of this anymore. Um, they have blocked up Valerio and Van Nuys. And uh, what they're doing, you'll see a car, cars that try to come up. They're going to move them and turn them all around uh, people do need to understand there is a curfew and there's an awful lot of people in vehicles trying to use van nuys which is usually a big thoroughfare but uh, this is uh, if you're coming down this area this is not going to be where they're going to let you through um, yeah. and so they are stopping this area looking for those suspects and at the same time they're also trying to tell people to go home at this point uh, it is a curfew but i see a lot of cars Christina, a lot uh, of vehicles and people i just want to get back to that video because it was such an intense moment to see the whole thing play out on live tv <laughs> where law enforcement arrived there and had to sort out who were the guys they were actually looking for from i think that was actually there were customers that were friends of the business owners they'd been going to that right. store for a long time and they wanted to help support the business owners but my question too is about those business owners who are standing there armed with their weapons mm -hmm. they were able to retreat inside the store uh, have you talked to them what's the update on them Christina can you hear us the people, yes, yes, yeah. yes, I did. I just, I'm having a little issue with IFP, but yes, the people with the guns, uh, they are okay. They were just wanted to make sure that those weapons were legally owned, but, but they do understand that they are the owners. Now, if you look above here, these are all owners of the businesses. 
that um, are standing by. And, and let me tell you, a lot of these people are armed, which is why I had um, the PIO talking to people about, and there they are, they're actually waving at you again now. Uh, but these, these are the people who are telling the police officers, hey, we're here, we're the owners of the businesses. Many of them are armed, and mm. I, I just get worried. This is very reminiscent of, of 92. Yeah, this it is really where it is. really does become, because we had a lot of, of business owners who had weapons and uh, people it just it just got really tense so if, if you're watching us and I know a lot of people want to come by and say hi don't go to stay home yeah. stay home because things can go south real quickly were you able to talk to that woman at yeah. the center of this were you Next able to question. talk to her after that all that happened no, they pushed her away down this way. I'm going to go. Oh, I have sorry, a feeling walking. that as soon as they go and they clear this, she will come back and uh, and, and maybe we'll try to talk to her. Well, yeah. um, she she uh, was amazing. To, you know. Yeah, she was such an amazing yes, was. supporter of those business owners. And she was there with her husband, I think another family member. But so everything got sorted out. But it just goes to show you, Christina, when law enforcement so arrives on the scene, they, they didn't know, they didn't have the perspective that we all had with no. the setup of everything. We saw the set. We met the people. We met the woman. We met her husband. We met the store owners. Uh, that was something, right. though, to see the different perspective and mm. what it's like for law enforcement to arrive on the scene and not know. Thankfully, it all got sorted out right christina everybody is okay it's calm it got so sorted far out. yeah yeah and I will, I will double check, but at this point, when I moved away, everybody was out of handcuffs, and I will go check it out. Like I said, I'm letting them figure it out because they're trying to bring, I think they got one or two of the guys, yeah. and they didn't want us there mm. uh, for obvious reasons. But I, I do want to go talk to her because I, I do want to, you know, and, and part of it is this. Uh, that woman is very agitated already, just like I am. We get very excited sure. about stuff. And sometimes that comes across in a way to law enforcement um, that may be a little bit... Uh, threatening uh for lack of a better word but i'm just guessing at that and i know that she was very um vociferous uh so when people are vociferous sometimes law enforcement kind of they, they just want you to be quiet put out your hands get those handcuffs on you and then sort it out later and, and that's usually well, what they and, tell us and, to and do. it's just that i was so I was just trying to to have them not have that image on live TV, and, and just, because I know how powerful that image is. But it speaks to what happens sometimes. Right, and and, and that image is is already going viral online. A lot of people all over the world that are now talking about that moment. Seriously, um, it's become sort of a, a moment that I think is going to be discussed. Uh, one of the questions that we asked Andy Nyman, uh, who is uh, the head of uh, communications for LAPD, why the the decision to uh, to handcuff right away, and what he explained and we want to give their perspective, is that, look, you're going into a situation yeah. uh, which past curfew, so you're not supposed to be on the street anyways. Uh, there's people holding right. weapons. They didn't have that much information, so they wanted to try to get everybody ascertained and figure it out. Thankfully, they were able to do that, um, but I think it's, a, it's an image in a moment um, yeah. that we will not soon forget. Uh, Christina, I, we, we will let you uh, take a breath I, I, and you know, try to talk. Uh, last, last word, real quick. <laughs> Uh, you know what? One of the things, and we were talking to the officers about it afterwards off camera, is sometimes it really would help if, and I know that they're under a lot of stress, but the first default is the handcuffs and the thing. And I know they want to be safe, but it's just sad that that's the first assumption about everybody you see. Yeah. And uh, sometimes that works against them. Yeah. For whatever that's worth. All right, Christina Gonzalez, thank you. We want to bring into our com uh, have a converse our conversation now, uh, Mark Ridley Thomas, who is uh, one of the LA County supervisors. Um, he's been a long time uh, community leader, back, of course, to the days of the LA riots, and and has done so many different jobs in leadership uh, since then. Um, supervisor, I don't know if you were able to watch what just happened. Um, I'm interested uh, in your perspective on on what just happened. Well, it's clear to me that things can get out of control very easily, uh, even in um, limited ways that interaction, assumptions are made, and uh, from there it begins to fly. Fortunately, uh, that was managed in a manner that was uh, moving toward a good result, and the individual should have been released of their handcuff were, uh, but it's the uh, indignity that is associated with being uh, handcuffed when in fact 
you have done nothing wrong. So um, in circumstances where things are tense, uh, we should expect that a bit more. So as law enforcement is trying to handle a lot of different situations across our city, most scenes don't play out like that uh, with the camera rolling on live TV where we had the, the, the luxury, I would say, of the setup of it all. Um, what is your concern as we proceed throughout a very, very difficult chapter right now in our city? Well, the concern is simply this, that we uh, make the distinction between those who are engaged in peaceful protests, which they obviously have a right to do, uh, those who are uh, engaged in unlawful activity and looting, the like, and uh, a third group who, who may be engaged in uh, acts of civil disobedience um, um, and are prepared to accept the, uh, the consequences of, of, of doing so. Um, uh, law enforcement has a tough job in terms of making uh, the distinction. I just wish to say that those who are engaged in uh, uh, looting and setting fires and doing a range of those uh, activities, they just simply need to stop or be uh, uh, faced with the consequences of breaking the law. Um, this is not about this. There's no way that that honors uh, the life of George Floyd. Um, racism is tough enough. Uh, the killing of unarmed African-American men um, is already uh, difficult enough for this nation to come to grips with. It seems to me that we should do all that we can constructively engage in the kind of social change that will make a difference. I do not believe that uh, destroying people's property and the like is one such way. Uh, let's talk for a moment about what you think is the kind of change that would make a difference. I know you've been in this fight for decades. Um, uh, some of the iconic images of 92 were, were you pleading with the community back then. And in this moment, what would be one specific, substantive, tangible change, either at the county level or the national level, you think that would make a, a real difference in terms of uh, fixing this sort of situation? Well, law enforcement has to come to grips with uh, shooting unarmed African-American men in particular. Uh, the pattern of this has uh, long standing and it has to be confronted, it needs to be called for what it is. Um, and to the extent that it happens with the unity uh, makes it even more problematic. It adds insult to injury. So that's what needs to be uh, confronted. Uh, the whole nation, the whole world saw. Uh, Mr. Floyd with a knee on his neck, pleading for his life. And why it was the case that uh, the officer didn't relent and two, three other officers uh, didn't intervene is precisely what has to be dealt with. And it's not an isolated instance. Uh, and until that happens, I suspect uh, we will continue to face uh, these sorts of conflagrations, and it is absolutely unacceptable. And I believe that we do much better than this, and law enforcement is called upon to do precisely. Well, we thank you so much for your, your time and your wisdom and your leadership here in our county during a very difficult time. Thank you so much, Mark Ridley Thomas. We appreciate you. But perhaps uh, the most memorable moment of this night uh, will be this moment that happened uh, in Van Nuys. Uh, we want to show it to you again because it just got interrupted by that pursuit. This is uh, Christina Gonzalez. She was profiling this woman who was um, in front of uh, a neighbor's store. Uh, she was trying to help pretend or protect that store. Um, and then looters arrived. And then this happened. 
let me tell you, let me tell you what's going on. So these guys in the vehicles, let's get a little bit closer. This vehicle and those guys over there got out of the other vehicle. There's a gold store, a uh, oh, gold great. store in the parking lot, and they were heading to it. And these guys came out and they said, no, you're not. Wow. And he's with us. They're, they're having a standoff here. Oh, my God. Uh, arguing about why they're not being allowed to break into the place. So I'm gonna the, those kind guys, of you listen to this. So these are looters yes, yeah. squaring off with community members Maybe. holding weapons on the yes. street. Yes. And where are all those cops now, that we, just drove past you? Uh there are three blocks down. Yeah. <laughs> This is really something here to see those store owners who want to protect their own business, yet they're by a business that is so vulnerable. Okay, so is that that's her family telling her to go back? Yeah, Christina. Yes. Go. You must not be business. Stop. We're closed. We're closed. We're closed. We're closed. We're closed. We're closed. Were those guys going into the gold store? Huh? What? Those guys? What, what, what's going on? They were closed, bro. Okay, they're kind of busy, but that's what we saw. Here comes the cops. They're trying to flag them down. We're trying to flag down the cops. Oh. Hold on. Let me flag them back here. They're driving past us. Oh. Stop. Uh, at least, okay, they're turning around. There they come. There they come. I, they just saw me. In, in three days of surreal moments on TV, this is one of the most surreal moments we've seen. Uh, what is underway right. right now in Van Nuys. All right, so here come the police officers they're to help to these community members. The guys on the <laughs> other side are in cars. All right, here they come. The guys here are trying to stop over there from looting in the cars. All right, now they're telling them. No, no, they're no, fine. They're good. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. no. Whoa. Oh, my God. Joe, Joe, to your right. Come on. He's with us. He is with me. He's with us. Sir, they, they, they're... Okay, sir. Sir? They're the store owners. They were protecting the looters, sir. Whoa. They're, they're protecting the stores. The looters are over there. Stand down for a sec, please. Relax. You're losing your looters. We're they're taking down that way. These are the people in the stores Which right ones? to stop. Point, point. All three of them. Okay. The, we're putting those in handcuffs right now. You do know no, they're no. not the looters. Hey, one person talk. Where's okay. the looter? Where's the looter? Where's the looter? Where's the looter? They're, they're helping protecting this building. Hey, where'd the looter go? They were. Hey, description. Uh, Black, white, Asian. African Americans. Hey. They're in a gravy. Vehicle. The other gray vehicle is parked in front of the Buy Gold store. A group of six of them. Six. We have video. Okay. That's all. Your officers are chasing. Them. That's one of them. Okay. This is unreal. But anyway, they're, they're putting this lady in handcuffs. I've just told them. You see, and here is where this is the some of the systemic issues that maybe some of those protesters are upset about. <clears throat> We are live now, and as I promised, we were able to track each other down. Monette, she's in one piece. And I, you were just listening for the first time to the audio yes. of what happened. You hadn't seen mm -hmm. what happened in the live mm -hmm. coverage. How are you doing? I'm fine. You I'm okay? fine. Hanging in there. You okay? Yeah. What happened? Well, the gentleman that owns the store, I've been knowing him for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. So... When we saw him come out of his establishment, we asked him, you know, are you okay? At that point, there were people that were trying to run in the store. Right. They were trying to get in the back, and they were trying to loot his property. Yeah. But because I have known him for over 30-some years, you're not going to loot nothing. And that's what we talked about before. And then, you know, and he had, we talked about that, but then all of a sudden these guys came up in the vehicles, and I guess they were going after the gold store? They were going after the gold store, but being that me and my family were out in the front with the owner to the liquor store, they just wanted to jump out the car and they wanted to harass me because I was talking a lot of stuff. And I just turned around and said, we're not doing that. We're not tearing up nothing over here. And you guys were arguing back and forth. And we were arguing back and forth and that's okay. And that's okay. I'm the same color you are. Uh, there was another car that pulled up behind them, they had a bunch of females in the car. They don't live anywhere around here, and they wanted to jump out. My first thing is, okay, this is what we're doing. 
And then when the police, we flagging down the police. So you were flag, you were flagging down. The I was flagging down the police with the owner and was asking, can you guys help? And they just kept going. I'm like, who does that? But then they turned around. They did come over. And then from your perspective, what happened? I was handcuffed, thrown up against a wall with my husband, my brother-in-law. And I'm just like, the hell? The news people are here. They're telling you it's not her. She's trying to stop the situation. I understand the protest. I understand what this is about. I get it. I understand that. I'm fighting for the same protest. But what we're not going to do is we don't want other people from different cities to come and tear up where we live at. Because we have to rebuild this. We did this once before. I, I understand the anger. I tell this man is placed in custody for, even though he's in custody, for first degree murder. They've done an autopsy, an independent autopsy. Turned around and said he died of as asphyxiation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you got three more, uh, three other police officers that you need to go get. Until you go get them, it's just going to be unruly. And it, it, I don't understand. <coughs> they don't take a rocket scientist. Everybody's seen the video. How much information do y'all need? And, and, and you and I were talking because both of us were in 92 mm -hmm. here. And, yeah. and, uh, when, yes. and, and, and just seeing the parallels. Of that. It's just, it, you know, it's really crazy. And, you know, the same thing that happened to Rodney King years ago is the same thing that is repeating itself. <clears throat> it's really sad for our young black men, our black women, our Latinos. You know what I'm saying? Caucasian people don't get treated like that. So when they turned around and said that the police officer was arrested for third degree murder, I turned around and was like, wow, have that been my son? And a uh, mutual combat? Y'all have hooked him up 24 hours ago. But it took you four days to get who y'all was looking for. And he got 70 police officers around his house. It's not going to stop until justice has been served. That's all we looking for. We just want some justice, that's it. Back to the incident and what happened. Uh, you know, I know that I was trying to explain to them and- And, and I thank you, I appreciate it. And, and you know what, I feel so sorry if we had in any way, you know, but uh, I, I think that we were both trying to do the same thing. What got them to take, what, what were they telling you that, well, that, because we were kind of telling them to stop, but what were they saying while they were handcuffed? Well, the officer that was behind me, I was explaining to him, no, we were trying to help. I was telling him, the gentleman that owns the store, his name. So once they were kind of like trying to calm the situation down, they was like, okay, okay. And then the owner of the store was like, no, it's not them. You know, they're helping us. They're help protecting our store. Then they let us go. But then my son and my daughter, somebody called them and said, your mom is on TV. And they pulled up in the middle of the street, and I'm looking at them like, okay, here we go. And the cops stopped them. They stopped them, took them out of their car. Well, they actually got out of the car, especially my son. He got out of the car. My daughter jumped out the car, and they turned around, and I explained it to them. I'm getting away from the police. I'm like, don't touch my kids. My exact, don't touch them. So they turned around, just, they, you know, they were listening and looking. And they was like, okay, ma'am, just get in your car. Please let me get in the car. We're going to have more than a problem than what we initiated. This let me get in the car. It's just, this is crazy right now. All we want is some justice, you know, and what you guys are doing to us now is injustice. You guys are shooting us with these little rubber bullets. Two members of the police department in another state has already been fired for dragging some kids out of their car. <clears throat> there are college students behind the curfew. The matter of fact, it was the mayor in Atlanta that fired them yesterday. And I, 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 I get it. I understand they tired. They wore out too. We've been worn out. 55, we tired too. The same thing, injustice y'all did to us years ago and my fathers and my forefathers, you guys are doing to our young black men and our young black women including Latinos. Now, now, the reason we are interviewing you here is because if we go in front of the store, which is where we they were, they, in jail. they already, <laughs> the car, if you talk to me, what yeah. happened when we were at the store? I was actually going back up there because they were calling me, talking about you guys were looking for me. Mm -hmm. So when I walked back, we, I was trying to walk up with my son 
And they turned around and said, well, you can't come here. I mean, they were just so unruly. I was just looking at them. This I did, is the police you're talking This is the police. And I did some. Un, I said some unruly things to them, too. Mm -hmm. And I told them, I work at the liquor store. This is where I'm going. The owner of the liquor store was letting them know after that, no, she comes here all the time. You know, she's helping me out. So at the end of the day, they wanted to come down the street just for little old me and a whole line and my son and my daughter and just be like, Nah, we just gonna sit you down. I wish you not gonna do it. So he turned around and said, you won't get up out of here? Yes, I will. I am from the block. I just don't agree with a lot of things that go on with the block. I I, I think, uh, were they the same officers? That, yes. The same people that we were dealing with? The same ones. They, were the they same didn't recognize you? <laughs> no, they know exactly who I am. Mm. They know exactly who I am. I've been, I'm 55. I've been here, God, my oldest daughter is 36. I've been here 37 years. I might have moved different locations, but most of the people on this block and the owners, they know who I am. Well, that's how I found you. We were looking for you. I, I wanted to make sure you were okay. You found me. Everybody knows you. And everybody now everybody just... knows you on air because of some of the things you said. Yeah. I'm and sorry that this is going on right now. And this is really injustice. It's crazy that you guys waited four days to put someone into custody for a crime that was seen all over the world. Had it been a black man or a Hispanic man, it would have took y'all 24 hours. He just went, it has been it. What do you think is gonna happen in the next 24 hours in the city? They're gonna continue to tear the city up. Mm. And if they don't arrest the other three officers that are involved, they're gonna tear it up more than what you guys think. If mm. they don't change the charge that they have given this gentleman, for third degree murder and second degree manslaughter. I'm just outraged that you guys would even say that. You should be arrested for first degree murder and you kept your knee on his neck for over eight minutes. I'm sorry that his family's going through it, but y'all need to care about who everybody else's family is going through it. I tell my kids this all the time. One second of your thinking will either cost you your life or cost somebody else their life. Mm -hmm. This white gentleman that's a police officer that is here to protect and serve, one second of your thinking cost somebody else their life, which is getting ready to cost your family your life, and they cause the people businesses. They don't have, what, 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 we're just coming off a pandemic. They don't have money for that. And that's the other factor. I mean, we're in a neighborhood where everybody, as we're talking, everybody has lost their job we or they're out. Lost their job. Uh, my manager and everybody in our, everybody, a lot of people on the block. We, we, we're a lower class family, and that's okay. We may do, but at the end of the day, if we were getting stimulus checks again, we're not anymore. You know why? Because the government is going to give it to the little small shops so they can rebuild. But then we're still struggling. There's still a lot of us that don't have jobs, that can't maintain a household. Mm. You know, um, you guys, and, and um, again, one more time, you're okay. You're all I'm right. Fine. You know, I, 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 I thank you so much for. I thank you for looking for me. Oh, you, you, know, you take oh, care. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've watched you for years. Oh, and you're something else. I'm honored. I, I, I truly am honored. I watched you for years. Well, and you are something else. No, no, you are something yeah, else. But you know what? You're the only one that can come into the hood. God bless you. Thank God you. Bless I know you, you want to go. Take care, my friend. You be no, you be careful, guys. She's okay, all right? She's all right, oh, I promise. Honey. Wow. Thank you so much. Go in. I know you're that your, you so your, your leg hurts. Strong you, thoughts. You, you get, go, go get Thank sitting you. down. Go get sitting down. Thank you, love. Uh, your son and your daughter, they're all waiting I, for I, it. Yeah, they, uh, this is all of them. Yes, I this is all of them. I know. This is the entire family. Picture? No, we Thank can't. No, no pictures. No pictures. Uh, okay, guys, I guys, guys, we, guys. I don't, I don't know how we top that, Christine. That was quite something. One of those moments, I think, that... Uh, really strikes Guys, a chord. Guys, I'm going to get her back up because she needs to put her leg okay. up. She really does. Thank you. <laughs> okay. You're, you're tired. A love fest going on Get there. in there, babe. Come on.
Um, All right. Some, some great work by Christina Gonzalez, uh, who's pretty fearless out there in the field. Uh, quite something to watch that as well. And she's right. She is one who can go into the hood, no problem. Um, I think there was some really powerful thoughts and some powerful words there for us all to take in, whether you uh, agree or disagree with everything she had to say. Certainly it is one Angelino's perspective. And to hear a conversation in depth after such a, a striking encounter, um, and her focus really got back to George Floyd. That's mm -hmm. really the, the conversation that she wanted to continue to bring it back to. And important to continue to have that conversation because there has been this small, relatively small group of looters that really have perverted uh, the conversation and taken away from the thousands and thousands of people all over this country that have been marching in the streets desperate to have that conversation that she just had uh, live on Fox 11. Uh, a remarkable woman Monette is, and uh, we're so grateful that we got but to meet her tonight. Even the way it played out with her recalling what happened and LAPD mistaking her and the others as perhaps the suspects before figuring it out, before being able to sort things out and take them out of the, you know, the restraints there for a second. Um, she kept going back to George Floyd. It wasn't necessarily about what she went through that experience and, and reliving it with us. She went back to the, the whole reason mm -hmm. we're under a curfew, the whole reason that there was looting, the whole reason uh, that store that she loved so much in her neighborhood felt like they have to protect their business and she was there to try to do that. And then you saw LAPD arrive, uncertain as to what was going on, who was who, and it just played out so dramatically. And yeah. good to see that she is okay and the neighbors there cheering her on. Certainly she says she knows everybody in the neighborhood and looks like she really well, does. Well, we just want to clarify and we're both tired, so we just want to clarify. The, the George Floyd is not the reason for the looting. Uh, so we do not want to necessarily confuse those two things. George Floyd, the reason for the protests, uh, not the reason for the looting or in, in most of the instances. Okay, very good. Christina, what, one of the great joys and privileges of reporting in the field is you get an opportunity to meet new people every day. Um, but every <laughs> once in a while, you meet somebody that stands out that you'll sort of remember for the rest of your life. And, oh, yeah. and Monette is, is one of those characters, isn't she? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I have a feeling we're, we're going to, after this, hopefully when it all comes down, get together. She has a wonderful family and a wonderful story. And, she, and her kids are amazing. And she was saying that the, the store owner, the reason they're protecting them is there was a time when she didn't have money for diapers. And these yeah. people were saying, don't worry about it. Come get milk. Come get what you need. And that is what a community is about. Mm -hmm. And that's why they were out there. Whatever people may think, whatever, you know, outside of all the controversy, outside of everything, if we remember that we are a community, all of us who live here, including me who lives in the valley, perhaps we can draw from that and, and yeah. make it stop. A lot, of, a lot of the protesters have been stopping the looting. i got to give them credit for that. I've seen it again and again. Well, that relationship and, uh, hopefully... between her and the store owner was very special. Christina, thank you so much. So now, we were talking to Monette earlier in, the, in our newscast, and we have been spending quite a bit of time with her today. I know some people didn't get a chance to hear some of her... Her point of view about what is going on right now and what may or may not happen. So here's what she had to say. It's not going to stop until justice has been served. That's all we're looking for. We just want some justice. That's it. I get it. I understand they tired. They wore out too. We've been worn out. I'm 55. We tired too. The same thing, injustice y'all did to us years ago, and my fathers and my forefathers, you guys are doing to our young black men and our young black women, including Latinos. What do you think is going to happen in the next 24 hours in this city? They're going to continue to tear the city up. But if they don't arrest the other three officers that are involved, they're going to tear the building that you guys did. And it, it, I don't understand. It don't take a rocket scientist. Everybody's seen the video. How much information do y'all need? And, and that's the point that a lot of people are saying. Uh, they want to see some action on this situation uh, that has been the, the flashpoint for all of this up in Minneapolis. They want to see that officer uh, who's now off of bail. They, they want to see serious charges or what they describe as serious charges. And they would like to see the other officers charged as well. Uh,
uh, we've had a lot of people, of residents, trying to help some of the uh, store owners to protect those stores from some of the looters and some of the people who looked like they were going to loot. And it's been an ongoing there, uh, day like that. One of those people was Monette, who we have been interviewing throughout the day. And here's what happened in their case. Take a look. This vehicle and those guys over there got out of the other vehicle. There's a gold store, a gold store in the parking lot, and they were heading to it. And these guys came out and they said, no, you're not. And he's with us. They're, they're having a standoff here, uh, arguing about why they're not being allowed to bring. With the owner to the liquor store, they just wanted to jump out the car and they wanted to harass me because I was talking a lot of stuff. And I just turned around and said, we're not doing that. We're not tearing up nothing over here. I was flagging out the police with the owner and was asking, can you guys help? All right, here they come. Over, and then from your perspective, what happened? I was handcuffed, thrown up against a wall with my husband, my brother-in-law, and I'm just like, the hell? The news people are here. They're telling you it's not her. They're putting this lady in handcuffs. I've just told them. And then the owner of the store was like, no, it's not them. You know, they're helping us. They're help protecting our store. Then they let us go. But then my son and my daughter, somebody called them and said, your mom is on TV. And they pulled up in the middle of the street. And I'm looking at them like, okay, here we go. I understand the protest. I understand what this is about. I get it. I understand that. I'm fighting for the same protest. But what we're not going to do is we don't want other people from different cities to come and tear up where we live at. Because we have to rebuild this. We did this once before. And uh, her loyalty, her loyalty to the store actually comes from the fact that the store owners have been there forever and they've helped her and many people with milk when they didn't have it for their kids and diapers. Um, and I, we have been, we are going to follow up on Monette's story because we're getting a lot of offers to help her out. So we're going to follow up on all of that and uh, definitely tell you all more th about it. I'm Christina Gonzalez live in Van Nuys. Back to you. Christina, I think the alarming thing too is that those store owners had weapons. They had big guns there. Yeah. So when LAPD pulls up, they see that as well. Wow. Christina, thanks. You yeah. know, a lot of weapons out there. Uh, <laughs> a, a GoFundMe page has already been up uh, to, for mm -hmm. Monette because so many people are transfixed by her story tonight. Mm.